2019 is at a close and the Switch has had an amazing year. It just felt like it had big release after big release and I couldn't keep up with a lot of them. I have taken my top 10 favourite Nintendo Switch games off this year and I would like to share them with you all. Let's start with some all important rules. Firstly, this isn't an official list, it is just one opinion out of many. If your favourites aren't on this list, it doesn't mean I don't like it or think it's bad, chances are I might not have even played the game. Secondly, in order to qualify for this list, it must have been released on Nintendo Switch in 2019, regardless if it's a remake or re-release of an older game. So if I wanted to put Volleyball from the NES on this list, it would be eligible since it did come to the Switch NES app in 2019. Spoiler alert, Volleyball isn't on the list. Speaking of spoilers, as always I don't want to spoil what's coming on the list in the intro, so the games you've been looking at so far are my honourable mentions. It has been hard to whittle this down to just 10, so let's go straight to what my number 10 pick is. Let's go! Number 10, Pokemon Shield. Let's go would have been a better segue for last year's Pokemon games, but alas, I have to make do with what I've got. Pokemon Sword and Shield were very controversial games long before they were even released. Everyone was crying, no national decks, reused animations, the graphics are terrible. But for me, I'm just seeing a really fun game. In my first weekend owning it, I put over 12 hours into it, which is a lot for me. This is only the fourth Switch game in nearly three years that I've sunk that much time into in its opening weekend. If every Pokemon was included, and there was about a thousand, then I would have no desire to try and catch them all. But 400 is a much more obtainable goal for me, so I have no problem with it. Living in England, the whole setting of the game strongly appeals to me, and a lot of the new Pokemon designs made me smile. The first three Pokemon I caught were a Squirrel, a Fox, and a Corgi. Yep, this is Britain alright. The main story mode is a bit too straightforward, but the wild area makes up for it. Being able to explore an open area, seeing the Pokemon out and about with a free moving camera, just feels like the next step up for the series. Hopefully, this is where Game Freak want to take the franchise next, use this as a base to build on, and who knows what they can do. But for now, I'm having a ball. Just like this man's head. And speaking of people with strange heads... My number 9 pick is Cuphead. This was a huge reveal for the Switch, seeing that it was exclusive to Microsoft, and it isn't the only game they've allowed to come to the Switch this year. I've been looking forward to playing this game since it came to Xbox One, but I've been unable to do so until it came to Nintendo's hybrid console. It was definitely worth the wait. Rock hard boss fights, an amazing hand drawn art style based on 30s animation, and it really hits that difficulty sweet spot where you'll fail at the same point over and over without it ever feeling unfair. And when you finally beat the boss, you just cannot top that feeling of satisfaction. When you die, it shows how far through the phase you got, which just spurs you on to try again. I'm not going to spoil it but the battle you have before the final boss was the best part of the game by far and took me an insane amount of attempts to finally beat. When I completed the game, I unlocked a harder difficulty. The fact that even exists terrifies me. Number 8, Super Crate Box. This is a game that I had on the Vita several years ago. It was said to be coming to the Switch earlier this year but got postponed. It's then finally arrived in the autumn where I made a review, but it has since disappeared off the European eShop for some reason. But those lucky enough to play this have an addictive high score game where you have to collect as many crates as you can while avoiding enemies. Each crate you collect changes your weapon and there is a lot of variety between them. 
It's so easy to get caught up in shooting enemies and forget about the main goal, but that's just a testament to how fun the gameplay is. It's not the only game on this list where it's beneficial to collect crates though. Number 7, Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled. This is the first of two remakes to be on this list. CTR was a classic on the PlayStation, one of the few kart racers to truly rival Mario himself. I chose this one over Team Sonic Racing. Why? Well, I have a comparison video on the channel that tells you why, go and check that out after this one. Not only does this bring back the original game, all redone from the ground up with gorgeous visuals and animations, but they also brought back tracks from Crash Nitro Kart 2. There's a ton of characters to unlock and costumes that make some of them feel like different characters. The drifting mechanic does take some getting used to, but it is very satisfying to pull off. The tracks are very well designed and complement the driving mechanics. You can play online or locally, the adventure mode is a lot of fun and brings some variety to how you race, and the monthly Grand Prix adds more content you can earn from achievements, which is a great way to keep you playing. And it is not the only game on this list to add content later on. Number 6 When this game was first revealed in February, I honestly thought this would be my game of the year, since the original sat firmly in my Wii U for a long time, but it's sitting in my number 6 spot. What's going on here? Maybe it's because it's the second one that it doesn't have the same impact. I feel that this isn't down to the sequel's shortcomings, but more to the fact that the Switch has a much stronger lineup of games than the Wii U. I'm no longer having to wait months before big releases, so I'm not able to give this game the time it needs. But it is a game of near infinite Mario levels, and I have seen some absolutely amazing and creative ones online in the endless run, which is where I spend most of my time. There has also been a recent update that added extra features, including Link as a power-up character, which just opens up a ton more possibilities. I have only made one level, and don't intend to make any more, but the story is a fun time which cleverly showcases different ways you can use the game's assets. This game also showcases just how creative and talented the players really are, and I keep getting wowed by what people can come up with. A game like this really does rely on its community, and although you can find a bunch of duff levels of unfair beginners traps and general trolling, the good experiences far eclipse the bad ones in my mind, and there are no troll levels as annoying as what the next game can bring. Number 5, Ukulele and the Impossible Lair. Yeah ok, troll levels going too far, but this is a very difficult level indeed. I really liked the first ukulele, it harkens back to the N64 days of Banjo Kazooie. This time they've taken the leaf out of Donkey Kong's book, and it really does feel like a Donkey Kong Country game. The impossible lair is available from the get go, but if you really want to stand a chance, it's best to explore the world map and beat the other levels. Each level beaten earns you an extra hit point in the final level. I actually had a lot of fun in the overworld, with top down Zelda like puzzles in order to unlock new levels and alter existing ones. The 2D levels are fantastically designed, and Yuka and Laylee do translate well into 2D gameplay. It was much more well received than the first game, and deserves all the praise it gets. It succeeds in being a fun game in its own right, and scratching a certain itch while we await a new Donkey Kong Country game. It would have also scratched a top down Zelda itch if it hadn't been for... Number 4, The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. The other remake to grace this list. After Breath of the Wild and Hyrule Warriors, I did wonder if newer gamers would ever get to experience a traditional Zelda in the future. But my question was answered by Link's Remakening. This was a fantastic game in its own right on the Game Boy, but now we have the definitive edition. Not just because of its gorgeous graphical style, but because of its quality of life improvements and revamped controls. 
where the Game Boy only had two buttons, you were constantly having to go into the menu to switch your items around, but now there are many buttons, and four of the key items are permanently mapped to them so the experience is so much more streamlined. The island itself is a joy to explore, whether you experience the original or not. The characters are memorable, and you do feel a connection with some of them, such as Marin. It isn't the longest game, but I would rather have a shorter game that is memorable and exciting throughout than a longer game that drags. And speaking of games that are short but very very sweet... Number 3. Untitled Goose Game I remember when I first heard of this game and really wished they would keep the title. And they did. In this game, you play as a goose as you go around and rain havoc on the village. It starts off showing your home has rubbish piled around, which I assume is the reason you want revenge on them. And what great revenge you get! Pulling up a gardener's carrots, breaking a broom, arranging a picnic... Yeah, some are a bit random, but it is mad fun. You have a list of things to do to cause mischief, and there are several different ways to go about them. Running in like a nutter, or taking the stealthy approach. <laughs> I never thought this game could be compared to Hitman. Anyway, you should all download and play this game now. It's hilarious, replayable, and one that you just have to see to believe. Number 2, Luigi's Mansion 3. Halloween was really fun this year, because on that day, Luigi's Mansion 3 was released, set in a hotel, not a mansion. It leans further towards the first game, where there's just one building, but it also feels level based, in which each floor is self contained and has its own theme. But at least Egad doesn't call you every 5 seconds and teleport you back to him like in the second one. There's a fun multiplayer, which we've already made a video showcasing, but there is also co-op, not just from the Scare Scraper, but also in the main quest with Guiji, who adds a lot of puzzle elements. Some puzzles did have me stumped for a while, and the bosses and animations in general bring a lot of charm and personality to the game. The Polterpup is awesome too. I've got to give my number one spot to what I consider the saviour of Nintendo Switch Online. NSO was met with a less than stellar reception, seeing that it didn't offer much that they weren't offering before, and NES games just weren't going to cut it. One year later though, Super Nintendo games were added, and the complaints have died down. These games are much more like it, and they add a lot of value to the NSO, and I have had a great time with these. Now, I know what you're thinking. Is he really going to put the Super Nintendo app as his favourite Switch game of the year? Well, the answer to that is no. No, I'm not. That honour goes to Tetris 99. This was given as a free download for those subscribed to NSO, and it is probably the most addictive game ever. 99 people playing Tetris at the same time, where only one can be victorious? What's not to love? I got so hooked to this game that I would spend an entire evening on it after intending to play just one match. That might sound like a bad thing, and yeah, it's not the best, but luckily they've released the physical version, which included all of the DLC and a year's worth of NSO and having a physical copy has really helped me not to sink too much time into it and get on with other games and projects. The core Tetris gameplay is as good as ever, it's fast, frantic, intense and an absolute joy to play. It is my favourite Switch game to be released this year. So those are my top 10 favourite Switch games this year. Remember these are just my personal favourites, so let me know in the comments down below which games you liked the most and I can maybe take a look at them. 
If you like this video then I would appreciate a like and if you want to see more from us then click that subscribe button for more to come in the future. Thank you for watching everyone and hopefully we'll have a great 2020 on the Switch.